here, uh, oh my, it's been a month ago or so, when he invited me to come. And uh, for whatever reason, I thought I was speaking on Valentine's Day. So in my preparation of those, that, those times, that time, I prepared a Valentine's message. But of course, Valentine's Day was last Sunday. <clears throat> So I missed it by a week. But the message, has, the message has not changed. God has not given me a different message. So today, a week after Valentine's Day, I'm going to give you a Valentine's message. The message I want to bring today is about love, and it will be about God's love for each and every one of us. But I want to start with a very bold statement and this is my perception, is that the word love is the most powerful word in human language. The reason I say that, there are four different words for love. In the English language, we have one word, love. That encompasses everything that love deals with. But in the original languages, there are four different words for love, which have four different total meanings. And here in the United States, we throw it all in one big lump and say, we love pizza. Or we love, uh, we love, we love the sunshine. I do. I love seeing it come in, especially when it was zero this morning. And then we turn around and say, we love our wives. We love our children. So what is love? Is it something that, that we like to eat? Or is it something that we cherish and, and love to hold on to, like our wives and our children, and uh, love that way? So love in the English language is very confusing. But I still will stand by the statement that love, and no matter what language is being spoken in, no matter what the meaning is, it is the most powerful word ever spoken. <clears throat> And in saying that, we have a statement in our scriptures in God's word that is the most powerful statement ever spoken by human lips. If you would, turn, turn with me in your Bibles to John 3.16. <clears throat> I speak, or whenever I marry someone or officiate at a wedding, Oftentimes I'll read 1 Corinthians 13. It tells all about love. And the differences, different types of love that there are. The way that we should act with love. Those are the ways we, we show love and we appreciate those that love us. But in John 3.16 there is a totally different statement there. It is a statement that is a powerful, as powerful as powerful can be. And we all know it. Everyone pretty much knows John 3, 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Very simple scripture. Very simple piece of scripture. But the depth and meaning of that scripture cannot even be fathomed by our human brain, by our thinking, by our concept of what love is, what love means to us today. <clears throat> Before Jesus Christ came into the world, no one had ever dreamt of saying that their God loved them. Think of that. Before Jesus Christ came into the world and said that he loved the world, there was no God that ever said that they loved those that worshipped him. There were gods of war. There were gods for wind, fire, um, gods of the sun. There were all, there were God, there is a God, if you go in different places, there is a God for everything that man does on this earth. But none of those gods are called a god of love. Oh yeah, Aphrodite, she's a goddess of love. But if you were to look her up in uh, Google search, which I did, 
She is a goddess of love, and it's sexual love, and it's sexual and fertility. It's not a god. It's, she's not a god that loves us for who we are. We only find that in the New Testament. The psalm, the psalmist, some of the psalmists came very close to saying that God is love, but they they just missed it. And it wasn't until the New Testament when Jesus came and we discovered that God loves. <clears throat> God loves the word, you know, the statement that God loves was a new and incredible message. God love, God's love is not a normal love. It's not, it's I, not normal. <laughs> is there a normal love nowadays? Uh, we have, I think we've taken love to a whole other level um, in all the, the changes in relationships, let's put it that way, that uh, have been coming down the pike in, I would say, in immorality um, to that effect. But God's love is agape love. And agape love is a choice, a deliberate striving for another's highest good. A deliberate striving for another's good. And, you know, that doesn't hit a lot of people the way they feel about love. It's like, if I love you, what am I going to get back from it? Or what am I going to receive? <clears throat> It is demonstrated through action. Agape love is unconcerned with self and is concerned with the greater good of others. Agape love doesn't come, come from our emotions, our feelings, our familiarity, or our attractions, but from our will as a choice to love. Agape love requires faithfulness, Commitment and sacrifice without expecting anything in return. Agape love doesn't expect anything in return. Those are some of the messages I try to get across whenever I'm officiating at a wedding. Is not to keep track of faults or wrongs. Not to keep track of what they did or she did uh, during your marriage time. I said your marriage won't work if you keep track. Because my wife would have divorced me years ago if she was keeping track. Because, yes, we'll not go there. We'll let that rest at that. But uh, she was forgiving and, and saw the better in me and continued to strive with me and didn't keep track. And love forgives unconditionally. She forgave me. Even though I didn't deserve being forgiven, she forgave me anyway. As God loves us, he forgives us without any commitment, without any uh, thing that in, paid in return. But uh, that word, sacrifice without expecting anything in return. I want you to think about that. God loves us, but he doesn't expect anything in return for that. That's a new concept for many people because usually it's like, okay, what am I going to get out of this? Um, would you be here today if there were no heaven, if there were no mansion on a hilltop, no pearly gates or no streets of gold, would you be here today? Love, unconditional love, does not receive, does not want to receive anything in return. So would you be here out of your love for God if you knew if there was no heavenly reward? Would you be here because he loves you? Simply because he loves you. I stay with my wife because we love one another. Would you stay with God because he loves you and you love him with no reward for your return? Simply out of love and out of the forgiveness of sin. Would we still be Christians? Would we still be in church? But that's what love is. Does not expect anything in return. There was a very rich man that I that owned an island and on this island there was a plantation uh, I don't know what it was whether it was sugar cane um, whatever they were producing something on this island and he owned many slaves and he had many people that were indentured to him 
But also on this island, he did not leave, he did not allow any preaching of any kind. He was often he had often said that even if a preacher had shipwrecked on their island, he would keep him in custody until a ship came to rescue him and send him away because he did not want God's word to be spoken to his people on this island. There was two Moravian boys that had found out about the work that was being done and about this man, this rich man's endeavor to keep God's word from the people that were there. They sold themselves into indenturement to this man. Two young boys sold themselves as slaves to go to this island to be with those people. As they were boarding the ship to head out, the parents were crying and weeping and asking, why? Why have you done this? What, what reason can you give me that you have sold yourself to go to this island and be a slave for the rest of your lives? As the ship was pushing away from the dock, one of the young Moravian boys shouted from the, the ship, we did this so the lamb that was slain may receive the reward for his suffering. You see, it's not about what we will receive. It's about what Christ has done for us. It's the fact that he deserves our love and devotion. Not what we can get in return. Not, it's not about heaven and it's not about a reward, but it's about giving back. Isn't that what unconditional love is about? It's about giving back unconditional love. <clears throat> God's love is the greatest thing that can be ever that can ever be said. I said love is a, is the greatest thing, word, powerful word in the English language. God loves is the greatest thing that can ever be said from human lips. It is the greatest thing that can ever be grasped a hold of by his children, by the human race. <clears throat> and this, God's love, is the first step to heaven. To get into this message, this message is called The Stairway to Heaven. There are four steps in getting to heaven. And believe it or not, all four of those steps are in this scripture. John 3.16. <clears throat> the first one is God loves. We've discussed that. God loves unconditionally. He loves us. It's the greatest thing that can ever be fathomed by human beings is God's love. Just think of that. What he gives us daily. What he has provided for us in the beginning of creation. He created the whole world. And whenever he gave it to Adam and Eve, he said, here it is. Do what you may. Prosper, grow. Do what you need to do with this earth. But it is yours. That's love, man. I have an old beat up car that I drive around. But you know, I'm not going to give it to John. Because it's the only one I have. But God, John's looking at me like... You don't want it, John, believe me. But it does have heated seats. So that is nice. But God loves us so much, he created this whole world for us, this whole earth for us, and gave it to us to use at our disposal. God loves is the greatest thing that can ever be said. That is the first step. Now we go to the next step. God loved the world. God loved the world. Suppose that I said to you that I love all the people in India. You would look at me and say, okay, that's a great thing to say. But really, I don't. Because I don't know anybody that lives in India. All I can do is mass the whole country. I can see the country in my mind, the, the, the layout of the country, and say, I love all those people in India. And, you know, hey, that's great. But that... I cannot love them. I can say that I love them, but individually I can't love them. But you know, that's the difference between me and God. 
I can say I can love every person in the United States of America. I can love everybody in the Red Bank Valley, which I do. I have a love of God for all God's people, all God's children in the world, but I cannot love them individually. <clears throat> I don't even know their names. <laughs> we were talking about remembering names. I can't remember. I don't know their names, let alone what's going on. But God does. When we st make this statement, God so loved the world, he doesn't lump it all into one thing and say, yeah, I love the world. I love all the people that's in the world. Think about this. He loves each person in the world in, 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 in person. Their own individual being is what he loves. And when we think of that God loved the world, think of the world as me. Your own self. God loves me. He loves you. He loves each one of us. And it even says that in scripture that he knows everything that's going on in our lives. He even knows how many hairs we have on our head. And Ed, that's not very many. But, <laughs> but to some it's a lot. But even so, he knows everything there is about us. God so loved the world. Being each one of us individually, he loves us. That's a concept that's hard to fathom in our own minds. It's hard to fathom that God loves me and all of you at the same time. In the whole world, every person in the world, all at the same time. We are loved by God. God loves the world. He loves all because he loves each. He loves each one of us. When we think of the millions of people in the world, we can't love them. We can group them together as love, loving our neighbors, but God knows them by name. He loves us each. <clears throat> and I want to add to that too. God isn't like us. Sometimes we only like those that are nice to us. Those that are likable. Those that are our favorites. Those people that smile at us and say hello. That's the people we love. But I'm going to say this. God even loves those that doesn't like him. Those that despise him. Those that curse his name. He still loves them. He loved me when I was very unlovable. He saw me through those times and never left me nor forsaken me. He still loved me in spite of myself. Let's put it that way. In spite of myself, God still loved me. Our third step <clears throat> to heaven is God so loved that he gave. That he gave. He so loved that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. It wasn't Christ's death that turned away God's punishment upon mankind. But it was God's love that appointed Christ as our Redeemer. Do you get that? It wasn't Christ's death and sacrifice on the cross that turned God to loving us. It was God's love for us that appointed Christ to die for us. His love was so deep, so holy, so perfect, so pure that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his son out of love. Out of love he gave his son. The next step, step number four. This is a step that many of us don't like to look at. Don't like to realize. And that is found at the end of John 3.16. Let's go back and look at that. 
that whoso okay for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life whosoever believes in him shall not perish people today like to think that God is good God is love God cherishes everyone so therefore we all get to go to heaven we all have eternal life because God is love how could a God of love punish anyone by sending them to hell that doesn't make sense a God of love punishment it doesn't make sense People like to throw that middle part out that they believe upon him. And besides, God doesn't send anybody to hell. We do it ourselves. God doesn't punish anyone that we punish ourselves by not accepting what has been given to us. They like to say God so loved the world that everyone will go to heaven. That isn't true. That isn't true. God has done his part he loved. God is love. God loved. <clears throat> God loves each and every one of us so much that he sent. The next part, it's up to us. The next part that we don't like to talk about or people don't like to look at is up to us. That those that believe upon him shall not perish. <clears throat> those that believe upon him shall not perish. We don't like to look at the cross. We don't like to see that it took blood as a forgiveness of our sins. We don't like to see those things because we, we want to bypass that. That's where it starts to get sticky in our own lives. Because to believe on, upon him is also to let God come into our lives. To let all the dirt come to light to let all the wrongdoings that we have that we have performed the things that we have said the things that, that we have done in our lives it starts to come to a head because in order to recognize God's love and to accept Jesus Christ we have to take a deep look into who we are and what we have done we have to take a look into that belief of who God really is who Jesus really is and what he has done for us. It starts to bring to light. The ugly. Of our old nature. <clears throat> That's where it gets hard. And many people fail at that. They love to accept that God loved the world. That he gave his son. But when it comes to the believing part. Many people stop. And they back off the steps. They back away from where they were because they don't want to give up what they have been doing. They don't want, to, or they can't. Some people can't. They won't give it to God. And they want to hang on to it and hold on to it. <clears throat> His love and our acceptance of Him is deeper and richer than any words could ever express. It's complicated, but yet it's simple. The outcome of which runs for an eternity. The outcome of our love and our acceptance doesn't stop at who we are in today's life, but it runs for an eternity. God has done his part, the part we could never do. God loves, God sent. Now our part is to accept from the heart to accept from the heart, not to receive anything for ourselves, but to give to Christ what he deserves. And that is our love and our dedication. So this simple scripture that everyone knows gives us the steps to heaven because that final step, after we accept and after we believe in Jesus Christ and we have turned our lives around and we want to continue, the final step is heaven. The final resting place, that final place where we shall go is in God's kingdom on heaven. Because he has given, he has loved, he has given, and we have accepted. That's all there is to it. 
It's very simple. This is a simple scripture, but yet it is the most powerful scripture, the most powerful words that have ever been spoken. Because I, I didn't even scratch the surface today. Many men study this word day in, day out. It's been studied for thousands and thousands of years. And we still don't understand it totally because it deals with the most powerful word ever spoken by man. Love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the promises that you have given us in your word, the promises of your love, that you so loved us that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. That's so hard to comprehend. That's so hard to let it sink in. And Father, I don't know that we can ever completely understand that until we are at your side until we are in your kingdom, until we are seeing Jesus face to face. And then all will become clear, the love that he has for us, the love that put him on the cross, the love that you had in sending him to that cross. Thank you, Father, for your blessing that you have given us, for the blessing of this season, this Lenten season we are in, that we will march from here to victory as Jesus Christ will put himself on that cross and then on the third day rise again in victory. Go with us, Father. Keep us safe. Watch over us every step of the way, Lord. May we proclaim your goodness. May we proclaim your love and your mercy for all of mankind. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.